Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenmara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And tonight, today, whenever you see this, uh, I would like to offer the November energy reading for the element of Earth for 2024. Earth covers the zodiac signs of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. If you're interested as to why I read for the elements instead of the zodiac, there's a video linked in the description down below. And if you've never had your birth charts done, which is kind of a fascinating thing to do, there is a natal chart linked in the description. It's not a sponsored or anything like that, but it is a really good chart. It gives you your birth chart with 12 houses, all the little planets and everything. And then it's between 10 and 20 pages of information that explains it all. Um, I go back to mine <laughs> literally frequently because um, each time you read it, it's like, oh yeah, something else pops up. So they're really fascinating. Um, all the books and tarot decks and everything I use are linked in the description as well. With that, we'll get started with November's I Ching for Earth of 2024. November. So Earth, your hexagram, cast it before the video here, is number 48, and it's called A Well. A well, a city may be moved, but not the well. A well suffers from no decrease and no increase, but often when the people come to draw water, the rope is too short or the pitcher gets broken before reaching the water. Miss Fortune. So what I'm hearing from that, just from that little part, is things can be a little a bit immobile. And Earth, you are the most st <laughs> stationary or stable of the elements, so you don't wander around too much to start with. But sometimes that can actually not be a good thing. People will come to you for help, for advice. You're the rock, the foundation. But when it come, when they come and they don't have enough information, that's when the rope's too short. Or they come aggressively, that's when the picture breaks. So there's there's good and bad, and what I'm hearing is for you, Earth, in November, let them do what they need to do. You're actually pretty stable right now, and you're in a good spot. So let's go through the lines and see where we're at. Our foundational line here. The muddy water at the well bottom is undrinkable. An old well attracts no animals. So the things that you have buried are not going to be the things that are going to draw others to you. When I say things you're buried, it's the repressed urges. Those are repressed aspects of who you are, your shadow self. So this is a kind of a reminder or maybe a tap on the shoulder that it's time to do some shadow work this month and just kind of dig through the subconscious and kind of root out what's ready. Don't force it. When you start looking, all of a sudden you'll have things pop up and start working through the stuff that's ready to be worked through this month because it sounds like this is going to be a month of um, some inner work and definitely working shadow work is what I'm hearing. So our second line, perch dart from the water, perches in the fish, uh, in the well hole, the pitcher is worn out and leaks. So even though you're kind of reaching out, you're kind of doing your part, you're trying to be a bit more social this month, you're reaching outside your uh, comfort zone, doesn't mean you're going to get success in that right at the moment because of that muddy water and the foundation. So the basics, basis of what I'm hearing for the month of November is do some inner work, do some poking around in there, see what pops up, see what you're ready to release because it's time to process some of that. So our third place line, the well has been cleaned out to my heart's sorrow. No one drinks from it, though it could be well used to supply drinking water. The king is a wise, the king is wise, and it is possible for the people to share his good fortune. This is saying once you do the work, then the king, your higher self, is actually trying to encourage others around you to come because you've already, you've done the work, you've cleaned things up, you've made it so that you are in a better place to actually help others. You know, um, in the Bible it talks about you can't pluck the um, sty from your friend's eye when you have a beam in your own. And that's what it's saying is you can't really be there for other people when you have your own uh, muddied waters that you have to work through. So let's take a peek at our fourth place line. The well is being tiled, no error. This is saying that you've done the work and now that you have processed what was going on there 
when you tile a well, you're actually preventing mud from getting back into it. So when you're doing the work, you're setting up the boundaries. You're doing cord cutting because, okay, you've sorted it out and you want to make sure it doesn't come back. So you're talking to Archangel Michael, you're cutting those cords, you're working with Metatron and Sandalphon, you're staying grounded, but you're also accessing those higher energies. And this is where they're saying part of tiling your well is meditation, a daily spiritual practice, whether it's reading Psalms and reading um, the Bible, whether it's meditation, candle work, however that manifests for you. This month is a good time to reconnect or refresh your spiritual journey because that's going to keep the shadow for the moment. I mean, we all have shadow stuff. Doesn't matter how many years you do this, it's going to come back because there's other things that need to be worked through. But you can make it a an easier process by stepping up and tiling your well. So let's step into our fifth place line, the solid one right here. The well is cool. Its water tastes like water from an icy spring. What is the best thing in the middle of a hot summer day than just a nice ice cold glass of water? And this is saying when you are get your well tiled, everything looks good, you've done the work to clean things up, it's refreshing to be around you. You are refreshing as well. You're, you, re, you feel refreshed within yourself. So it's that inner journey, those inner things actually have real world changes and growth and it's so beneficial for you to be able to process and move forward within the world that we live in right now. So our capstone here, the well rope lies unconcealed confidence and supreme good fortune. Once you are in a better headspace, once you have worked through some of the shadow that has coming to the surface in this moment. So this month, each person is going to have this a little bit different, but this month you have something specific. And as you're listening to this, it'll probably pop up. That is being called to clear out, to work on, to meditate on, to bring in the light and sh reveal the shadow there. Your shadow isn't actually as bad as people imply it to be. Your shadow is the parts of yourself that you're not willing to accept currently. So when that comes forward, it's a good thing to examine it and find out why. What kind of thing shoved that into the darkness instead of letting it be more authentic to yourself? So when that comes forward in this month, really be gentle with yourself. Do some inner child work and find out where the core of that repressed emotion comes from. Why did your shadow grow so strong in that particular area? and bring it back to its source and be very gentle with yourself doing this work. We all have to do it. It's not something to force, never force shadow work, just so you're clear. But love yourself through this process. It's, it's a long-term process. And anyone who says, I have conquered my shadow. No, you haven't. <laughs> you might have conquered that layer of it, but you, everyone has more doesn't happen until you take on a full light body and that's the only time your shadow's truly been broken into its smaller pieces and fully reintegrated into the conscious mind so take your time work through what comes up and be gentle with yourself they're really wanting to emphasize that is to be gentle with yourself through the month of uh, November so now we'll hop over to get a little more definition or clarity with that hopefully with the tarot and oracle cards. Um, I read week by week and there's approximately four weeks in November so we'll go with four weeks. For each week I read a guide or a guardian, guide through the week or guardian from anything that's unexpected, a message from source, positive reassurance or affirmations for you to work with, and then a lesson or a challenge from the tarot, something that you can work on that week or giving you a little heads up that there could be some hiccups in certain areas. Um, as I said, I read week to week, one, two, three, four. How they manifest within your life can be completely different. You might start off with week three and end on week two. So however it manifests, uh, Source knows the, the uh, <laughs> truth of that for you. So your first week's guide or guardian are the angels of blessings and abundance. With this one as your first week of November energy, this is really saying this first week is a time for you to appreciate and tap into the blessings that you have 
earned and the blessings and um, abundance that you have worked so hard to gain. Are you where you're at right? Where you want to be in a really good spot? Maybe. And if not, you still have come a long ways. And that's what they want you to remember and, sh and uh, tap into that gratitude energy so you know, you know what? I still have my big goal up there, but instead of being down here, I'm up here now. I'm not quite to my goal, but look at how far I've come to get to this point. And that's a huge blessing, and that's showing that your abundance is growing. Your abundance can mean financial, which is awesome, but it could also be abundance in the fact of a new partner. It could be abundance in your buying a house versus renting. Abundance shows up differently for different people. It doesn't always mean money, which they're wanting to bring up abundance in this particular situation for earth is look at how awesome things around you are and it might not be where you're at you where you where you want to be just yet that's not the point look at where you're at right now and be very grateful and happy even if it's not where you want but be grateful and happy for where you're at because that opens the doorway for more so your message from source is contemplation when we look inside ourselves, we contemplate reality, we contemplate ourselves, we contemplate, think about, mull over, consider our place within this world. When Source is coming in this first week, it's calling you to do inner work, inner contemplation, meditation on a mantra, on an image. And in this image, there's a lot. Her hat has got all sorts of fun goodies up going on. And this is the stuff that you think about. It's not just a one and done like, okay, I'm gonna do this work right now. I'm gonna meditate, I'm gonna chant this phrase. Oh, look, I'm done. Doesn't work like that. The contemplation of the shadow, the contemplation of that part of yourself that you have shoved into the back because you just don't wanna deal with it. When you start to actually look at it, you see how it actually fits into your life. When you bring your shadow into the daylight, you, re you reveal diamonds, not coal because the pressure that it's been building actually shows you parts of yourself that maybe when you were a teenager you were this awkward um, kind of geeky person because you read all the time and you had glasses but you grew out of it you got laser surgery you got contacts you still have kind of a geeky side part to yourself but you're hiding it because you don't want other people to know but it manifests in the fact that you are very knowledgeable and you have a flexible mind because you keep learning that has actually become a benefit for you. That's some of that stuff that can come forward in those type of situations. But when you actually look into the shadow and what's ready to come forward comes forward, when you contemplate that, it allows you to see how it can actually fit into like a missing puzzle piece into your life. So those are the things to contemplate and that's what Source wants to bring forward for this first week. Your lesson or challenge, oh, there's being very loud, this is a lesson, um, something to work on, <laughs> is the magician, number one in the major arcana. It is you can do anything, take charge of your life, you can manifest what you need to be a success. What they're saying is don't forget you have tools to work through this process of shadow work. You have been given gifts, you have been given uh, physical tools, and by the way, people who are there to support you are also tools along the way. When you're doing shadow work, you definitely wanna make sure that the person you're working with or talking to about it is grounded and supportive of you no matter what's going on. So pick that person carefully if you do decide to bring someone else in because when you're talking shadow, this is vulnerability and that's one of the tools the magician uses is being able to be vulnerable with themselves. Sometimes it's good to have a sounding board, it's not necessary, but it does help sometimes. And the magician's just reminding you, you have a lot of gifts and tools at your disposal to use, but don't forget there's other people out there that can be supportive as well. So your second week's guide or guardian is take a step back. These are the angels that remind you, tap you on the shoulder. You're heading at a breakneck speed sometimes, and it's time to slow down. It's time to check, check yourself before a wreck occurs. And what I'm hearing with this one is take the time for self-care. The second week, the first week you're working with some gratitude angels, you're working with the blessings and abundance. But the second week, 
you've been looking at things a little bit differently because you're starting to understand how that shadow can be brought back into the light where the diamond that's been hiding in there actually become functional and usable again and when you do that you have to take a step back because when your shadow reveals the next layer you have a shift in realities things change because you're reconnecting to who you are when that happens your ego loses control loses hold over you which is great that thing needs to you need it but it needs to also know when to go play with blocks in the corner and so when you do that you have this moment of what just changed how do i integrate this now i have to learn to move with this new part of myself it's usually pretty subtle but you'll notice that there's a shift that occurs when you start looking at that part of yourself again your message from source is vacation they're saying this could be a physical vacation little I mean, it's possible in November, but it's also taking a mental vacation. Do the inner work. Don't put yourself into a stressful situation. Don't worry about it. You're working in the first week with contemplation. You're examining and you're observing and you're thinking about it. You're kind of mulling it over. But in the second week, take the mental vacation. Do the self-care. You know, watch that funny movie you've been wanting to watch forever. Take a bath. Read that novel that you've been setting off to the side. Let your mind and emotions process and recover because when you start digging around in your subconscious it can get a little intense sometimes but don't forget the self-care that's where the vacations coming in is as you go through this month you're doing the work take the time to do self-care and they're really wanting to emphasize this in the second week so your uh, lesson or challenge from the tarot is the five of summer trust there is a reason for everything that happens remove yourself from negative emotions of others focus on what frightens or worries you when you start disconnecting from others it's actually kind of beneficial because this allows you to look at what's really going on within you when you start to examine that when you really start to look at that it changes how you show up in the world it changes how you observe other people but you can't do it when other people's energies or emotions are carrying you the five of summer is saying step back this week is really about as you're going through this process it's all right to say i'm not going out tonight i'm not going to do that game night i'm not going to that dinner that's okay and the second week is a time for you to check back in with yourself the first week can be a little intense the second week is saying it's all right to say i'm good i'm going to stay home but they're also saying allow yourself to examine why this shift occurring is bugging you so much it could be something simple like it a change change is not always easy but it could be there's a part of the life that needs to be tweaked a little bit to make this fit better so just don't go overboard obviously but take the time to really examine what's going on there your <laughs> third week's guide or guardian are the angels of healing energy this is working with archangels like this one's pretty much probably Raphael and you're working with others as well with Camiel you're working with the healing energy angels the ones that bring in that light that peace and that recovery aspect you're reconnecting to who you are and that can be uncomfortable but this third week the angels that are coming in are saying it doesn't have to be miserable we're here to help you process this we're here to help you work this into a cleaner space so this is a really good time after you've done the work and you've kind of taken a little bit of a break this is where you really start to integrate things back into the whole and that's what I'm hearing with this one is this third week is take take the advice and the strength from the angels that are being that are offering it to you work with integrating this energy back in they're saying you're going to be very well off emotionally after all this is over it's just the process of going through it could be a little bit rough this month but it's something you are more than capable of handling the magician is saying you have all the tools you have the skills to deal with it and you're in a place right now where you can actually process it that's the beauty of letting shadow work come to you is it will come when you're ready and it'll only bring forward what you're ready to deal with in that moment forcing it you get to see a lot more it's a lot more rough <laughs> and it can definitely mess things up long term for a time it'll straighten up eventually but when you're just doing it from a gentle state of 
What am I ready to see? What am I ready to process? What am I ready to work on? And you allow it to come forward in that respect, it's a lot easier. But the healing energy angels this third week are going to say, now that we've done that, let's get everything settled, let's rebalance, let's readdress, get everything set back where it's supposed to be. And your message from source is choices. You have the choice to do this or not. They're recommending allowing the process to go forward, but if you choose that you're just not quite ready for what comes forward, you have that right to say, not right now. You have that right to say, hold up, this is a bit intense, I'm not quite ready for this. That's also working with those healing energies is knowing when to say, okay, that's enough. Because you are the one who's dominant in this physical form. There's times it may not feel like that, but you really are the one that's in charge of it. That heavy responsibility, personal responsibility always is, but it's saying the choices are yours. When you're ready, allow it to happen. When you're done, you can say stop. If you're in the middle of a process, it might take a little bit because there's momentum built into that. But once that process is over, it will pause the rest and you'll get to it when you get to it. And that's totally okay. So your lesson or challenge is six of winter. Positive changes are on their way. A welcome relief from troubling times, traveling or relocating. This lesson that's coming up is what I'm hearing is don't say no just because it's uncomfortable. On the other side of the uncomfortable is growth. On the other side of the uncomfortable is this positive change, this transformation. You're going from a um, caterpillar through the cocoon stage into a butterfly. Just uncomfortable doesn't mean bad. And so that's where allowing that process to shift, observing it from the higher self perspective. That way you can understand, nope, I see what's going on. It's really not hell. It's not feel. It doesn't feel good. But I can see what's on the other side, and that's amazing. And that's what the Six of Winter is saying is you have the choices to say no, pause, whatever. But don't forget it's the other side of that uncomfortableness that's going to be the benefit. That's where you're going to see the real changes. You're, you, this third week I'm hearing is you've done the cleanup work. This is that tiling the well period where you're actually like shoring things up to keep it clean, to keep it healthy, um, and make yourself put yourself in a better state. So let's take a peek at our fourth week here. And we have the angels of power and intention. And these angels are really coming forward to say, as you've went through this process, you've understood you really do have a lot more say in your life than what you may have thought to start with. Your shadow is not your enemy. Your shadow is part of who you are, but it's the parts you're not quite ready to understand fully you'll bring it forward as you go through life but that unlocks the ability to have a say in what your existence is like and when you set those intentions with firm command over your being it changes the dynamic because you're not saying it from man it'd be nice if I could have that because that'd be really cool it shifts it to the state of this is what I want. This is what I'm going for. And I'm going to focus on this term in this way because that is my end game. It activates that divine will and that's where a lot of power resides because your divine will is tied to your higher self, which is tied directly to the seat of creation, the throne of heaven, however you look at it. So when you start to really work through the shadow and you start to really tap into that, life becomes a lot more interesting and things change in really powerful ways and a lot of times it's subtle to the outside but for you personally it's going to be massive shifts so your message from source is in between you're coming out of a shadow period you're going through the pro a process of clearing of reintegration of healing and understanding your power and the ability you have to intend and create you're in the middle path right now. You're un you're in between the two worlds. You're shifting out of an old pattern or an old belief system or an old habit, and you're moving into something clearer. You're moving into this more sunny section here in the middle. But you're in the process right now. You're in the hallway, so to speak. So take the time to enjoy this process. It might be uncomfortable, and it probably is. I'm not going to deny that. Shadow work is not rainbows and butterflies or everyone would do it but what you're doing is healthy because 
You're doing something that is changing your life for the better. You are becoming a more whole person. That in-between period, that's a journey, and it is something when you look back, you can be like, I remember when that happened. Man, that was uncomfortable, but you can see the shift and be like, ah, but I needed that. So you're in that middle period right now. Enjoy the journey as much as you can. Take care of yourself. Um, Definitely do self-care don't you know don't go overboard with it but do things that make you feel comfortable hang out with people who are supportive and they're really saying this month work on that energy of gentility it's going to be your ben- it's going to be your um, it's going to be to your benefit there we go <laughs> your lesson or challenge this last week is the princess of winter inquisitive truthful realistic and undiplomatic this should be fun <laughs> information that can help you but which may also be difficult to hear speaking the truth with kindness indigo children or adults when we get to this point in the end of the month the power and intention are the th- your goals or how you uh, show up you're in that middle territory between you're moving and down the hallway so to speak but with the princess of winter when you start to integrate parts of yourself you start to bust through illusions and when that happens it's an amazing experience but your ability or your desire to whitewash the truth tends to fade. You're like, you know what? The truth is the truth. And what this card is saying is, yes, you're, you've changed and you're a bit more honest with things, but there's ways to temper that so you still say the right things. It's just not coming across as a bull in a china closet. And that's what I'm hearing with this is your, your curiosities because of how things have changed is very high by the end of the month. You're also wanting to be very honest and upfront with everything because that's how you've grown and changed, which is great. But they're also saying, don't let that get too far because being too brutally honest can chase people away really fast. Speaking from experience, but (laughs) that's what they're recommending is you've changed a lot. Your, uh, Your vision has changed. The way you see the world and show up in the world has shifted. But that doesn't mean the world's ready for all of that. So keep your change going. Keep it moving. Keep everything going the right way. But pick and choose who you reveal all of that to because it's not always the benefit that everyone sees it. So with that, we'll wrap up this reading. Thank you guys for swinging by. If you're new here, drop a uh, hit that subscribe button. Drop a like on the video and let me know your comments down below and what your thoughts, feelings, opinions, all that fun jazz. As long as we're respectful, I love hearing from everybody, and I will see you guys in the next video.